good morning to all in today's session we are going to start with csar net grf chemical science june 2016 part c series 1 in the earlier session we completed part b so part b 60 questions recorded in the single session and the remaining 61 to 70 questions have been completed in any other session so we already finished up 2017 entire year two sessions like june and december 2018 june and december question papers 2019 even 2020 these many question papers have been completed in the previous uh, sessions and all are available in the uh, world of competitive chemistry youtube youtube channel okay so this kind of previous year question paper discussion will help you for uh, preparation towards any competitive exams and also entrance examinations let us discuss about today's topic here this part c series one consist of questions from 71 to 80 so uh, total 10 questions we are going to discuss from this june 2016 chemical science csr net grf question paper let us start with question number 71 complex chromium bipyridinyl taken thrice plus three shows red phosphorescence due to the transition here is the complex this is called octahedral complex being bipyridinyl is the bidentate ligand there is a formation of chelate ring and six uh, what six coordinated complex is there and what they are asking for under photochemical conditions red phosphorescence red phosphorescence is due to the transition here so any complex when subjected to photochemical conditions there are two type of emissions are possible after absorbing electromagnetic radiation so light emission may be carried instantly that is called fluorescence after some extent of time delay that is called phosphorescence two type of transitions are possible so let us see phosphorescence of this chromium associated with what kind of transition in order to explain this we have this diagram before the diagram first we will discuss about what is fluorescence and what is phosphorescence excitation from the singlet the ground state to singlet excited state and back conversion from singlet excited to singlet ground state is known as a fluorescence which is the instant process within that instance only that light reflection light emission will be possible that is called fluorescence fluorescence is a continuous process as long as light is applied so luminescence of that kind of material that kind of complex is possible whenever phosphorescence is applied on the material so what happens singlet can be excited into uh, excited singlet state and that participated in inter system crossing so that inter system crossing and that, there is a spin variation spin inversion is possible now it turned into a triplet state and further ground state emission is possible this kind of inter system crossing requires it consumes some extent of energy some extent of time that's a reason why here time delay is possible for phosphorescence so that uh, complex will glow complex will luminescent even after supplying the light so because of this time delay so which is known as phosphorescence in this chromium complex what kind of transition is carried uh, by this phosphorescence transition process for that purpose first we have here ground state electron may be excited into this 4 t1g level and uh, by the absorption of violet colored light and even that can be excited into 4 t2g kind of uh, excited state by the absorption of green color light so if this light is directly back converted into back emitted and uh, converted into a ground state this instant process is known as inter system crossing right there is another provision when this chromium complex subjected to inter system crossing this level will be inter uh, participated in inter system crossing <clears throat> and here emission of light is possible from t uh, 2 eg level to 4 a2g okay so it will be transformed from 2 eg level of triplet excited state to 4 a2g of singlet ground state so in this phosphorescence the transition possible the transition possible is 4 a2g will be the ground state and 2 eg from 2 eg the emission spectrum will be appeared for 4 a2g for this chromium complex phosphorescence is observed in this type of transition so for question number 71 option number 3 will be the correct answer let us move on to question number 72 
choose the correct option for carbonyl chloride with respect to bond angle bond length here carbonyl chloride compound was given this is the structure carbonyl chloride c double bond was single bond f single bond f is there in carbonyl chloride we have to depict their bond angle and bond length angle between carbon uh, angle between fluorine carbon fluorine that is given as that is given as 108 degrees and angle between fluorine carbon fluorine carbon oxygen angle between fluorine carbon oxygen is given as 126 which is larger one so fluorine carbon oxygen bond angle is the larger one right so here fco angle is greater than fcf so this is about bond angle now let us discuss about bond length so in case of this fluorine carbon if we go with bond length bond length is nothing but distance between the two nucleus of bonded atoms if you are taking carbon and fluorine this bond distance is 1.32 and carbon oxygen bond distance is 1.19 right so yes so fluorine chlorine bond fluorine carbon bond is single bond and it is somewhat larger when you are taking carbon oxygen double bond it will be shorter obviously that's the reason why here from this interference we can observe that bond angle of cfc is lesser when compared to fco this is the first one and the cf bond is larger whereas yes let us discuss about question number 73 which of the following reacts with osmium pentafluoride in liquid bromine trifluoride okay so osmium pentafluoride is given and uh, here bromine trifluoride is the solvent so in this uh, reaction conditions what is the material what is the compound which is suitable to react so among all the given options xenon hexafluoride and xenon difluoride will react with osmium tetra uh, osmium pentafluoride now let us see how the reaction is possible whenever osmium pentafluoride treated with xenon difluoride the compound will be xenon difluoride works like a fluorine eating agent it will release the fluorine to this osmium so that osmium turned into uh osmium f6 minus and xenon turned into by losing a plus it is uh, converted into xenon f positive right so here is the complex formation so here is the reaction taking place between osmium pentafluoride and xenon difluoride now let us see what is the second possibility second possibility is when xenon hexafluoride is treated with osmium pentafluoride xenon hexafluoride upon treating with osmium pentafluoride the possible reaction is xenon penta uh, xenon hexafluoride and osmium pentafluoride get combined and again here xenon is liberating fluoride so that it turned into xenon pentafluoride positive or osmium hexafluoride negative in the both in both the cases xenon hexafluoride and xenon difluoride working like a fluorinating agent they are liberating f minus they are liberating f minus and osmium pentafluoride is accepting that f minus hence osmium pentafluoride working like a lewis acid and here it is the covalent solvent bromine bromine trifluoride is the covalent solvent so that in the presence of bromine trifluoride osmium pentafluoride will react with these two so uh, for question number 73 option number 3 will be the correct answer let us move on to question number 74 here 
nitrosyl chloride was taken this nitrosyl chloride treated with either tin uh, what silver nitrate bromine trifluoride stearium pentafluoride so these many reactions are provided among all which reactions are able to give nitrosonium ion as the major product term? where nitrosonium ion is generated that we have to predict from these reactions when nitrosyl chloride is treated with nitrosyl chloride treated with bromine trifluoride what happens here chlorine will be accepted by bromine trifluoride and it turned into a nitrosyl nitrosonium ion no positive denotes what nitrosonium ion will be generated and bromine turned into a negatively charged complex right in the same manner nitrosyl chloride can be treated with stearium pentafluoride lewis acid lewis acid that's why it will see chloride and here also we will get nitrosonium ion and stearium pentafluoride turned into stearium fi and cl minus in this manner in both these in these two reactions nitrosonium ion as the product which reactions in c as well as d c and d so stearium pentachloride able to bind with this nitrosyl chloride stearium hexachloride formation is possible and nitrosonium ion will be generated in option number c and d so for question number 74 option number 2 will be the correct answer where nitrosonium ion will be generated let us move on to question number 75 it is a part of inorganic chemistry again the complex that shows orbital contribution to the magnetic moment here condition to exhibit this orbital contribution most of the transition metals are spin only magnetic moment will be exerted but in few cases orbital contribution will be there in which case it will be there we have to predict let us see here it is the copper complex nickel complex cobalt and the chromium all are aqua complexes and all the central metal exist in plus two oxidation state now let us predict where the or orbital contribution is there in order to get the orbital contribution in order to get the orbital contribution here eg orbital and asymmetrically filled eg orbital even it is uh, filled symmetrically or asymmetrically no orbital contribution will be given and uh, second case here also uh, eg orbitals are symmetrically filled again no orbital contribution here eg orbit t2g orbitals are asymmetrically filled this is the important condition for orbital contribution if T2G orbitals are asymmetrically filled, then only orbital contribution is possible. So if T2G orbitals are symmetric and EG orbitals are symmetric, in this case also orbital contribution will not be there. What is the condition? The condition is T2G orbital should be asymmetrically filled. This is only the required condition. T2G orbitals are asymmetrically filled, then only orbital contribution will be there. T2G orbitals are symmetric, no orbital contribution. EG orbitals are either symmetric or asymmetric. In both the cases, no orbital contribution. So, when we observe for complex, in copper hexa aqua complex, 3D9 system will be there, where 9 electrons will be contributed in this manner. So, here 1, 2, 3, being it is a high spin, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10th electron will be like this. So nine, sorry, nine electrons will be like this. So copper plus two, that's why D9 system, one electron is deficient here. So here, symmetrically filled T2G, no orbital contribution. Either symmetric or asymmetric EG, no orbital contribution. So that this entire complex orbital contribution will not be there. Only this electron corresponds to spin only magnetic moment, no orbital contribution. When we go with nickel, nickel D8 system, so how can we fill 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8? Here two more electrons are there. So these contributed with only spin only but not orbital because T2G is symmetrically filled, right? So T2G, uh, the compulsory condition is T2G asymmetrically filled. That is observed in this cobalt complex being it is D7 system. Electron contribution will be like this. T2G, 1, 2, 3, 4th electron into EG, 5th electron EG, 6th, 7th entered into T2G. D5 system, T2G5 system, EG2 system is there. It is asymmetrically filled T2G shell. 
hence we can go with orbital contribution here magnetic moment not only not only calculated based on spin only spin orbit coupling can be possible and orbital contribution will be there for this cobalt complex if we see chromium here t2g symmetric eg symmetric sorry eg asymmetric hence we can say t2g symmetric it is a or only spin only but not orbital contribution hence only for option number 3 orbital contribution is possible option number 3 is a cobalt hexa aqua complex for question number 75 option number 3 will be the correct answer let us move on to question number 76 among potassium fluoride tin tetrafluoride stearium pentafluoride solute that increase the concentration of bromium tetrafluoride minus in brf3 are what it will do it will do when brf3 is treated with either of these three compound it should raise the brf4 minus concentration means brf4 uh, minus formation should be greater in extent that is possible only with the potassium fluoride right the cation generated in auto ionization acid anion is a basic compound solute that increase the concentration of cation is called acid increase the concentration of uh, anion is called a base and potassium fluoride when treated with brf3 anion will be generated here brf3 will be the lewis acid kf will be the lewis base here that's the reason why here kf behaves like a base and having strong tendency to lose f minus and the brf4 minus concentration will be raised that's the reason why for question number 76 option number 1 will be the correct answer. let us move on to question number 77 paramagnetic susceptibility of order of 10 to the power minus 6 observed for potassium permanganate is due to right so it is a negative term so negative term is there potassium permanganate so what is the oxidation state of manganese in potassium permanganate in potassium permanganate we have four oxygens each oxygen contribute minus 2 minus 2 into 4 8 minus 8 in order to compensate positive charge by potassium <clears throat> minus 7 it will be so minus 7 is a negative charge so that manganese exists in plus 7 oxidation state neutral manganese system is uh, what 4s2 3d5 system 4s2 3d5 is the electronic uh, outer shell valence electronic configuration of manganese here but it exists in plus 7 right so plus 7 nothing but these five electrons and these two electrons totally removed hence we can say d0 system it is electronic configuration is d0 and it is temperature independent paramagnetism will be treated temperature independent paramagnetism will be exhibited because it is not relevant with this magnetic moment value so that it is temperature independent so for question number 77 option number 4 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 78 correct order of metal carbon bond lengths of metallocenes metallocenes are nothing but any metal which is surrounded by cyclopropenyl cyclo pentadienyl anion cyclo pentadienyl anion ligands then it is said to be a metallocene here three different metallocene complexes were given what is nicolocene one is the uh, ferrocene second is nicolocene third is cobaltocene when these three complexes were taken where metal carbon bond length is more that ascending order we have to depict in order to get that first let us see this ferrocene ferrocene is the sandwich compound which is generated by iron which is surrounded by two cp ligands cyclopentadienyl anion ligands and the metal carbon bond length in angstroms will be 2.06 so in case of cobalt bond length is slightly enlarged being iron to cobalt nuclear charge increases so that repulsions will be enlarged so here bond length is slightly enlarged 2.12 angstroms when we go with nickel so we are moving in the period right that's the reason when nuclear charge is more so that repulsive forces are more so here bond length is bond length is still higher that is 2.20 angstroms so metal carbon bond length order will be nickel complex is giving higher nicolocene is nicolocene is giving higher followed by cobalt and least is provided for ferrocene 
so that is the order that is the order so nickel will be higher nickel will be higher b will be higher followed by cobalt followed by iron so in option number 2 the exact order is given so for question number 78 option number 2 is the correct answer let us move on to question number 79 right it is a part of volumetric analysis where we are taking 100 ml of solution of 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 3 molar bismuth plus 3 copper plus 2 each is potentiometrically sorry photometrically titrated 745 nanometers with 0.1 molar edta solution identify the correct statement for this titration being edta is a uh, what hexadentate ligand it able to form complex with the metal ions so that stable complex formation because of complexation this kind of analysis is possible hence it is a kind of complexometric titration bismuth and copper are binding with this edta in both the cases total volume of edta solution used will become 5 ml in total volume edta solution used for this titration will become 5 ml because Uh, we are taking bismuth and copper so 2.5 ml of edta can be consumed for each metal each metal is consuming equal amount so that here 5 ml is the total 2, 2.5 for bismuth 2.5 for copper and the total volume becomes 5 ml only for question number 79 option number 2 will be the correct answer option number 2 is correct question number 79 let us move on to question number 80 it is the last on continuous exposure of boron 10 sample slow neutron flux 10 to the power 16 meter square second inverse its a 3% weight fraction disappears in 3 into 10 to the power 7 seconds cross section for neutron capture in barns by boron 10 is given by so this is a actual problem to be solved but in general we can directly depict from this formula so it requires cross section area for neutron captured by boron will be 1000 1000 barn cities okay for question number 80 option number 1 is the correct answer by this series 1 of part c june 2016 question paper have been completed in the next session we will come up with more 10 questions thank you very much for your patience listening i think it will uh, it will be helpful for your preparation thank you thank you one and all